thank you for joining me again. Today I'm going to be making a remix of my mom's uh, meatloaf recipe. So she would always put some um, potato chips or maybe some like cereal crushed up inside of the meatloaf to kind of help hold it together as well as a filler. Today we're going to be using a handful of these delicious salt and pepper pork rinds that are that will act as the, in place of that um, cereal or, or chip. Sometimes she would use crackers too. So I have about two pounds of ground turkey here I'm going to use, as well as half of an onion, an egg, two cans of tomato sauce, and four garlic that I'm going to um, put in there. And rather than regular mashed potatoes today, we're going to be having our remix dinner with these cauliflower mashed potatoes. There are lots of recipes that you can make these yourself, um, but I find that these are just delicious and they're very convenient. They have them in the frozen food aisle at Walmart, Stater Brothers, probably any um, grocery store. So usually um, we'll do one for two people. So I'll cook two because I'll do one so we can have dinner tonight and then one for lunch tomorrow. So I already have my oven preheating to 350. Now I want to show you how I get all of this together. So here is my ground turkey. I know some people make meatloaf with different types of ground beef or different ground meats. I pretty much use ground turkey in place of um, ground beef now. So I'm going to chop up this half onion very finely. You can also grate it over the meat if you prefer, but I actually like um, the chunks of onion throughout the meat. So chop this up. So when I was growing up, my mom used to make this meatloaf, and um, she would always take whatever we had left over at the bottom of the cereal box or the bottom of the crackers, and she would crumble that up and put it in there. And because I'm trying to do this in a low carb version, I'm gonna go ahead and use my chicharrones or pork rinds rather than do that. And she often would make potato salad with, uh, with meatloaf. And I, I would help her peel the potatoes and all that, but I really never cared for potato salad because of the, the boiled eggs. Just, I don't know kind of smelled yucky to me. <laughs> so I'm getting all these chopped up. You could also do um, bell peppers in here. I'm going to actually do some bell peppers. Um, if you have some mushrooms, you could throw those in here. This is a good recipe that you can use up some of your veggies that might be like on their last leg. You can throw them in here. peppers going. So just in case you missed it before, this is my favorite way to chop a bell pepper. Just go around the core. Chop the end off there too and use that. You could throw this right in your garbage bowl. And if you get it close enough, you won't even have to do this part that I'm doing. But in case you don't, just make sure you take those seeds out and that white part. That white bean, you don't want that. And I'm actually only going to use half of each one of these, of each one of these colors I have. I happen to have pretty fresh bell peppers here, but like I said, if you have some that you have saved over from a different recipe, this is an excellent way to use them up. Because this recipe can totally stand some bell peppers that maybe aren't the freshest. They're on their way out. Time of year it's April right now it's kind of difficult for me it's been about 12 years now since I lost my mom 
and it was in April. And you know, whenever this time comes around, it's a little bit difficult. But what's nice is making these kind of recipes, it just helps me remember and cherish the memories that I was able to make with her. I wish I would have asked more questions, would have wrote down recipes that she made throughout the years. Now I have to go off of memory, but I do feel really fortunate and blessed that I got to experience that with her. You know, not everybody gets that time with their parents and I, I was lucky to have that. So I'm just gonna chop up these bell peppers. As you can see, I'm chopping them very tiny, dicing them up, throw them in here, and I'm gonna crack my egg and throw it in there, put one can of tomato sauce in there, crush up my chicharrones and throw them in, and reserve one can of tomato sauce for the top. I will show you how it all comes together. turkey. I'm going to grate in about four cloves of garlic. Just grate that right in. I love a really strong garlic flavor so if you like less garlic flavor you could do less. You could leave it out all together but I do think it really makes a difference and adds something to it so. And the number of cloves kind of depends on how big they are because my cloves are pretty good size. But if you have smaller cloves or larger cloves of garlic, like this is a small one, you can do less or more. You kind of know your family and how much garlic flavor you like. So you should get that all off the back. Okay, so in addition to the, the garlic and the onion that we have in there, we're going to add some more seasonings here. Let me show you what I got. I have some garlic salt, onion powder, Italian seasoning, parsley flakes, as well as, I almost forgot. Oregano. And of course, we need salt and pepper. We don't need too much salt because the chicharrones have salt in them. So, um, or if you're not making this low carb, you could use your breadcrumbs, your leftover cereal, leftover crackers. If you don't have tomato sauce, you can make this like a Tex-Mex version and throw in some salsa instead. Just looking something to add some moisture. Remember with these dry like um, Italian seasonings, it's always good to put it in your palm and just kind of work it, get some of those oils with that. And 
sneaky. A little bit of parsley. Doing about a palm to half a palm full of these parsley. And oregano. Okay. Now, in here, I'm also going to crack my egg. Depending on the amount of meat you have, you might need more than one egg. Uh, mine should be good with just one. And then let me put this aside just for a minute. I'm going to show you how I get my If you don't have one of these things, you can pretty much use anything. You can use a pan, a whatever you have to kind of break them up. I'm just going to put a couple handfuls of my chicharrones in this bag. Like maybe two handfuls. There you go. To avoid too much cleanup, let me get these babies out of the way. Seal it. Give it a good whack. And then just roll it out. Get them nice and broken up like bread crumbs or cracker crumbs. This is the same method you would use um, if you wanted to make some chicharrones tortillas. You can make some tortillas made out of chicharrones. Just um, pair it with some cream cheese, an egg, and um, some mozzarella cheese. Take a look at it and make sure there's no big pieces. Every once in a while you'll get one big stubborn piece that doesn't want to break up. Okay. And no muck, no fuss, no mess. Throw that in there. Just like you would breadcrumbs. This is not only going to act as helping to bind the meatloaf together, but it gives it additional flavor as well. And then you need your best kitchen tool. But first you need to open the tomato sauce. So we got two cans of, how many ounces is this? Eight ounces of tomato sauce. Or you could do one larger can if you have like a 16 ounce or 12 ounce. Basically, all you're doing here is adding it in here and then one on top. So add that in. I'm go ahead and open this one before the top. You need your best kitchen tools now and get in there and work all of those seasonings and those bell peppers and the tomato sauce and the egg. Get them all in there. I know on the cooking shows a lot you see people use the fork and the mixer, but my mom taught me you have to get your hands in there. You don't want to work it too much, but you do want to make sure that you get it all worked through because you want to have bell peppers and onions and tomatoes, tomato sauce in every bite, as well as the seasoning you put in. Okay. 
Then what we're going to do, unfortunately I forgot to spray my pan, but if you're smart you'll spray your baking pan with Pam before you do this so that way you can just throw it in. Let me wash up and then I'll do that. My baking um, dish here sprayed with some Pam. Now I'm going to throw in my meatloaf. You could even do, um, I like to do one big loaf, but you can do uh, smaller loaves in a traditional size meatloaf pan. I usually do one big loaf um, in this type of size of pan. You can see how I'm kind of putting it together there. Meatloaf, it actually tastes even better the next day. So this is a great make-ahead meal. Um, kind of like spaghetti, it just, I guess, because it gets to marinate and it just tastes so delicious, um, even more delicious the next day. All right, so I have the meatloaf in the oven cooking away and I have my, um, fake mashed potatoes hanging out over here by the microwave because they only take about five minutes in the microwave. So I'm gonna cook those once the meatloaf is done. So this meatloaf, it's a great recipe to make ahead, but it's also one of those recipes that when you get home, you can whip it up really quickly, throw it in the oven. It does take about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your oven. Um, but I remember when I was growing up, as I mentioned, this is one of my mom's recipes. She would put it on and then sit with me and do homework. Um, so this is a good recipe that once you put it in the oven, you can pretty much forget about it for at least 30 minutes. So while you're doing homework with the kids, you could have this cooking for after that. It's one of my favorite re uh, memories with my mom is doing homework at the dining table, waiting for dinner to get done. Um, I'm gonna just keep letting this cook away and I'll show you how it all comes together. It's been in there. Meatloaf has been in about 30 minutes. I cut it in half. Look how delicious it's looking. Yummy. Okay, I'm just about to pull my meatloaf out of the oven. I have my first batch of my mashed potatoes right here. And I'm actually gonna add these to my meal prep dishes for tomorrow's lunch, half and half. These are so delicious, you will not miss real mashed potatoes. If you're not looking to cut quite as many carbs, you can actually do a mashed potato recipe where you, sub where you still use some real potatoes, but you substitute in some cauliflower as well. Um, but for me, I just totally do these full time now, no real mashed potatoes. So those are um, meal prep dishes. The um, mashed potatoes for dinner are in the microwave right now. So I'm going to pull out my meatloaf in about two more minutes and I'll show you how it comes together. Okay, I have some quick cooking green beans over here with some garlic cooking up. Just in a little crisp on them. Some garlic and salt and pepper. I'm going to take my delicious meatloaf out of the oven. There the baby is. Look at them nice and bubbly and brown and delicious. And you can see those bell peppers. So now, remember we're eating this with pretty much all veggies. So that being said, I am serving larger slices because we don't have the filling factor of the potatoes. So let me throw in some in here for my lunches tomorrow. If you're doing bread, delicious, delicious way to eat meatloaf is in a sandwich. Look 
look at that delicious meatloaf. You can see all of the layers of the peppers and the onions and the tomato sauce on top. And we're going to pair that with our yummy, quick cooking, microwave, baked mashed potatoes. And there we go. That's what we have for lunch tomorrow and for dinner tonight. Look at this delicious dinner we got here. Our yummy meatloaf. You can see all those layers of peppers. Green beans, get them nice and crispy. They look kind of burnt, but they taste much better like that. And our fake mashed potatoes. And one last tip before I let you go. Make sure you wash out that pan right away. Before you go sit down to eat, Take a few minutes to go ahead and clean out, wipe out the pan with your sponge before it gets cold because that stuff will come right out. As you've seen in the previous shot, it was kind of burnt on and I literally just wiped it out really quickly with some soap and water. I actually wore my mitten while I was doing it because it was still piping hot. So make sure you do that and you'll save yourself a lot of time trying to get all of that out. Um, that reminds me of another tip that if you get stuff stuck on the bottom of a pot like this, like you get, um, whether it's eggs or something you're cooking up and you get it stuck, put just a tiny bit of water in there, put it on top of the stove, and use a plastic tong or spatula to gently scrape that up. It won't damage your pan and you'll get it out in just seconds. Thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy your dinner. I hope you'll try this. Miss you, Mom. I love you if you're watching this video from heaven. Take care, everyone.